If you could just maintain that for a bit. Thank you, Father. 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 Rodobondo fregedi bibike bikedesh. Rapa baka bala baka bala bebesh. Bless the Lord, O my soul. for you. Come on.
That's why we bless your name. such a thing as just enjoying yourself in the presence of God. Yep. Such a thing as just just being there before your father. Being open before your father and just having a good time in his presence. The Bible says in his presence is the fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Something about the presence of the Lord that makes it a difference maker something about the presence of the Lord that just changes things. Something about the presence of the Lord is called the glory of the Lord. That is, the glory of God is the weight of God. That is, if you put God on a scale, you don't measure his weight in kilograms. You measure his weight in glory weight of God's presence, the weight of God's presence, and it changes things, it changes things, it changes things, it changes things, the fact that he is there, and he's in manifestation, it changes things, it changes things, it changes things, things to be changed, it erupts things, the presence of God, and that is why as believers, we put premium on that presence. David seemed to have understood that presence more than even some, some New Testament believers. Though the Holy Spirit was not in him, right, as he is now in the New Testament, but yet he knew something about that presence. And so he will say in Psalm 42, as the dare pants after the water brooks, so longs my soul after you, O oh God, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Right? Because he understands that that presence is a difference maker. Is a difference maker. He understands that. He understands that. He has been in the backside of the desert. And you know, David wasn't, he didn't have it all together. David was a nomad for many years of his life. Just going from cave to cave, 
from place to place, being chased, being pursued, being persecuted, you know, by the king of Israel himself. So he was just hiding in one cave or the other. Hiding in one cave or the other. But within those times of persecution, within those times of uncertainty, and even while he was in the backside of the desert, while he was keeping his father's sheep, Many times, David would just burst forth in praise. In a lot of his psalms, I, 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 I'm sure, would have just come out of his times just in basking in the presence of God. Just looking at sheep. No other job. Just looking at sheep. I don't even think if he knew he had a future. Because it was such, it was such a difficult time for David. It was a difficult time for imagine being anointed by Samuel himself that you are going to be king two, three, four, five years down the line. It seems things are worse off for you. And Samuel wasn't a prophet of no small means. When he came into the city, they asked Samuel, he said, It's all well with us. <laughs> so it wasn't he wasn't a small prophet. It was someone who had been dedicated to the service of the Lord right from the days of Eli and had been hearing God's voice. And this Samuel came on the instructions of God to anoint you as king. And five years down the line, you are in a cave. Do you get this? They prophesy on you. The jar of oil was emptied on you. In the presence of your brothers, in the presence of your father, and all the anointing has produced in your life is cave to make you a caveman. That's what the anointing has produced. Is that not a contradiction? It doesn't really sound like one. What do you do when prophecies have been made on you? And rather than you expecting, of course, it's a prophecy. I ought to have an upward motion from there. A word of the Lord has come. You're excited at the word. But the next place you are in is under one very wicked boss like this that will not even just allow you rest. And you're wondering, I thought I was anointed. I thought oil came upon me. I thought the word of the Lord came to me. How come God's word has come to me and yet I am still in the cave? What do you do at such a moment? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? When it seems like your environment is not producing the effect of the oil upon your life. What do you do? When it seems like you know that you are headed to the palace. Before oil came on you, you were closer to the palace. When oil came on you, <laughs> you were further away from the palace. Wouldn't you have doubted Samuel that maybe Samuel misprophesied? Maybe it was someone else who was supposed to anoint. Wouldn't you have given up on the word? Wouldn't you have given up on the word? There's something called stability of spirit. There's something called inner energy. That whilst you're on your way to the promise, you can still be found faithful in what you're doing now. Whilst you are on your way to the full manifestation of God's grace on your life, you can still be found serving still be found in your duty post. Still be found there because I know there will be people who after being anointed, the next thing you will expect, okay, even after a couple of weeks, you're not seeing that, okay, so it's still, it's still early. A couple of months, well, it's still early. Maybe one year, okay, 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 let's see how it goes. Two years, uh, all right. Maybe by the third year. The, you, know, you know we like numerology in Christianity. Three is the number of Trinity. So it is the year, it is the third year, saith the Lord. And the third year has come and gone. 
Nothing. Number four comes, and then year five comes. Oh, it's the year of grace. It's the year five. It is this year. It is this year. The word of the Lord has come. I'm seeing it this year. And year five goes nothing. 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 Rather than even the manifestation of the anointing, it's, it's, it's not that you are on the same, it's literally getting worse. Literally getting worse. Like you don't even have a house. You can't even be assured of security all night. Because the men of Saul are everywhere looking for you. The president of the country, not just a captain of an army, is after you. So you, you can be caught at any time. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? That's why the Bible makes us understand in Colossians 1, the prayer of Paul. After he had prayed that you be filled with the knowledge of the wisdom of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The knowledge of the will of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And then he goes ahead in verse 11 to say strengthening with might. Strengthened with might according to his glorious power. Listen, unto all patience and long suffering. That is the reason why God is strengthening you. You will think I'm being strengthened so that I can run through the troop. But the first in assignment of the strength of God is so that you can wait. That means waiting needs strength. You think I need strength to do. God is saying no. I, this strength now is not to do. This strength is actually to wait. His strength to wait, to just be there. And what do you do while you are waiting? You do what waiters do. You serve. You do what waiters do. You serve. David, he said, now I'm anointed. I can't be going back to sheep. Sheep. He, how can a whole anointing, Samuel's, as in Samuel's jar of oil was overturned on me and you are now sending me back to the desert. David took that whole Oruro <laughs> and went back right from where they called him. Went back to protecting his sheep. The anointing should help you to wait. The anointing should help you in your own private matters. It was while he was serving that a lion came. But there was already oil on this guy. So he took the lion. The Bible first of all even said he, David took the, 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 the lamb from the lion's mouth. And then the Bible says the lion rose up against him. <laughs> David now said, I will tear you down now. David was between 17 and 18 years old. Historians tell us around that time around that time let God's anointing in you first of all help you in your waiting don't be in a hurry to, to connive you know there's a way you can connive to see the manifestation of God's grace and that's why sometimes God hides certain things from you because if you knew about it you will spoil the whole thing you will use your own hand to, to scatter everything. So many times, God will keep certain things from you. You know why? Because if you, are, if you had known about it, you will force your way. Imagine, you know, that, and that's why you need to appreciate David. Imagine with everything David knew, with the anointing on his head, he saw a Saul. The death of Saul was going to fast track his movement. Apart from the fact that you first of all even be delivered from your enemy, your greatest enemy. It is actually, and that's why the people, his people said, look, this is, this is prophecy. This is, this is the reality of what as, as the Lord has said. Just do, 
The servant said, just give me one assignment. I will strike once. I won't need to do it three times. I will do it once and it will go down. Anointing to wait. Anointing to see offense and walk away from it. Many people are very quick. There are two types of anointings that we see in scripture. There is the anointing within you. And there is the anointing upon you. The anointing within you speaks of what happens to us at new birth. The spirit of God comes inside you. Jesus speaking to his disciples in John 14. Think of verse 17. He says, when the spirit of truth comes... He said, the world cannot receive him, for it neither knoweth him, neither has it seen him. But he says, but you have seen him, for he is with you, and then he shall be in, in, in you. He shall be in you. In John 4, when Jesus was speaking to the Samaritan woman, he said, this water that will give you will become inside you inside you a well of living water springing forth from where from within you from inside you so there is the anointing of god within you first john 2 20 first john 2 27 he says the unction that you have received the anointing that is within you verse 27 teaches you all things so there is an anointing within you that has the ability to teach you but then there is also the anointing that is upon you. They had that from the Old Testament. The people that occupied the office of prophets, priests, and kings had the anointing come upon them for the work they have been called to do. And so in Acts of Apostles 1.8, Jesus will say that the power of God will come upon you after the Holy Ghost has come. And then you shall be my witnesses. So we see the anointing upon an individual. Often times. Because the anointing upon you is for service. Is to help you be a blessing to others. Is to enable you for the work. Notice he said when the, the, the spirit of God comes on you, the power of God will come on you and shall be my witnesses. So it is enable you to become a witness. And it is what is responsible for the gifts of the Spirit, the charisma, the demonstration of God's Spirit. But because many people are thrilled by that sensationalism of the anointing upon, they neglect what the anointing within should do. The anointing upon you is like a glory upon you over you. If you don't have sufficient stamina, it can quench you. Because you're carrying something on top of you. So the anointing within you is to help you in standing firm. In standing strong. To be steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. To be passionate about the things of God. You see, many times, even believers, they talk about how they, 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 they seem to lose steam and lose passion for the things of God. And, you know, you can lose passion for the things of God and it will still give you mic and the Holy Ghost will move. You could actually even be walking in disobedience. And you will still be a fantastic blessing. It's the mystery of the two anointings. Because the anointing upon is with reference to God's call upon your life. It's with reference to God's call upon your life. And the call of God is irrevocable. It doesn't take it back. It doesn't retrieve it. It's irrevocable. The anointing within you is what is responsible for the fruits of the spirit, the stamina that you have within you. 
So it is possible not to give attention and to neglect what is within you whilst what is upon you is still in manifestation. Good example, Samson. Samson came out from Delilah, from Delilah's house. Came out from her house and the gate of the city was already locked. That same thing that used to come on him came on him one more time. And it took not the gate of your house, not the gate of your compound, the gate of a city unhinged it and carried it up a mountain, up a hill. That anointing still worked on him. That anointing still worked on him. So, sometimes you can be in disobedience personally and things will still be working. Why do you think the Bible says that there are some people that will come before God and they will say in your name, these are the things that we did. We cast out devils. And the response of the father to them wasn't that it's a lie, you didn't. That means they did. He said in your name, this, we did this, we did that, we did the other thing. But then the response was that I don't know you. How? What was on you was still working, but what was in you was already out. The fire in you was already quenched. Though the anointing upon you was still in motion. It was still in motion. So it was still producing. It was still producing. And God will honor his name. Sometimes the reason why we use the name of the Lord and it works is not because we are fine, we are good, we have it all together. It's because it is his name. It's as simple as that. It is his name. Peter and John, by the gate beautiful, healed that man. Everybody came around. And then Peter responded to them and said, why are you looking on us as though by our own power and holiness we have done this thing? It's not. He said through the name of Jesus. Through faith in his name. Acts 3, 16. Through faith in his name. As this man be made whole. Through faith, it is his name. So God was honoring his name. But you are far from him. You are far from him. So there is the need for us as believers. Manifestation of the anointing is not the epitome of spiritual maturity. You can be spiritually immature and you will have the anointing function. Paul said to the Corinthian church that within that church was all manner of manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. Not even the Ephesian church, one would have thought, or the Antioch church. The Corinthian church. And yet in their midst, he said, there were divisions. There was strife. There was fornication. There was drunkenness. Fornication that was not even heard of in the gent- with, among the Gentile camp. And yet there were the people Paul said, you are blessed in all utterance and knowledge. The same people. The same people. So you can be spiritually immature. Don't, don't judge a people by because he's speaking out loud. No. Or because he's preaching fire and brimstone. Spiritual maturity is by your character. What kind of wine is coming out of you? When we interact with you, what kind of person do we, do we interact with? Do you carry a presence around you? Do you carry a presence around you? It's not about, it's not about certain things are happening. God told Moses the first time he was going to bring out water from the rock. He said, heat the rock. When he did hit the rock, water came out. The second time that was going to happen, God told him, speak. Speak to the rock. Because that was demonstrating the first time how Jesus, being the rock, 
That was in types and shadows. Jesus being the rock was going to be smitten. Was going to be persecuted for our sake. So the first time he said, beat it. But the second time, because you don't crucify the Lord two times. He said, speak to it. But Moses came in anger. The meekest man hit it. And didn't just hit it once, he hit it twice. But the water refused to gush out. No, water still came out. Plenty. But when he was done, God God said, come here. He said, why did you dishonor me before the people? Moses came and said, must we bring that water for you? When did it become we? Must we? So it's you and me that you are doing it together. The meekest man. God was the one that, he wasn't the one that said he was the meekest man. <laughs> God said he was the meekest man. And yet, out of prov- provocation, he, he, he stepped into disobedience. But stuff still worked. Stuff still worked. So don't be too carried away about the manifestation of the anointing. Don't be carried away by that. That a man can sing does not mean he will be a good husband. He has a sonorous voice and he holds the mic. And as he holds the mic, everybody falls on and he can be home and be beating his wife black and blue. Why? There is something within and there's something upon. And they work independent of each other. They work independent of each other. Didn't you read it in your Bible, 1 Corinthians 13? He said, if I speak with tongues of men and angels, they are talking the two all together. He said, and you have lot to love. He said, you are like a, you are like a symbol. You are not sounding any better than that. He says, no, you have all faith that you can move mountains. The suit, I have the gift of prophecy. And understand, you have revelation gifts at work in you. And you have all faith that I can move no mountain. And you have not love. He said, you are nothing. You are nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. What am I calling your attention to now? I'm calling your attention more than many quick manifestations. The reason why many times people get into that space, why they are manifesting, and they still fall. You know why? It's because they didn't take time to build that stuff within them. They didn't take time to pay attention to that moment of waiting. To that moment of character. To that moment of submission. They didn't wait. They were not trained. They were not trained. If the anointing is upon you, it comes on you and starts manifesting. It's not you. It comes, it's like the donkey that carried Jesus into Jerusalem. And the donkey starts thinking, oh, man, Sarah that was laying clothes down for me. Am I not the best donkey ever? Wow. Has it? And the donkey starts enjoying himself. No, it's not you. You got it all twisted. It's the person that is riding you. It's the person riding you. It's anointing on top of you. So how do we pay attention to that which is within? In the place of God's presence. In the place of God's presence. And that is why till today, David, even though he's gone, David is still a system in the Bible. David is is a cause in in the Bible. There is the key of David. There is the city of David. They are the strong messes of David. So you see that it, it became a system within the scriptures. He became a system there. How come? It is because he trained himself. He trained himself. How many of you will be in the palace? You are playing music for the king. To even have some respite and have some rest from evil spirits. And the guy looks at you and carries a javelin and says, you. And throws a javelin at you. What will be your response? Ah, I didn't know this how he's doing you. 
<laughs> I didn't know this how he's doing you. There's a proverb where I come from that says, the person that we are, we are, help, we are, we are helping to fast, that is still eating. We saw your situation and want to help you to fast. And you, the owner of the situation, you are still eating. So your, your, your problem just started. The Bible says he evaded and he left. He didn't leave to be to go and make it the top of the story for his friends. I say, do you even know what that useless king? He will still die last last. He didn't say that. How come? The anointing within. The anointing within. Don't always be in a hurry to get manifestations. And when I mean manifestations, I don't mean manifestation of the promise of God. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean the manifestation of, you know, that sensationalism. Don't be in a hurry to run into all of those prophetic words. Don't be in a hurry. There is a place of process. And if your feet are not on the ground, when that stuff comes on you, it can weaken you. Because when the light of God's grace shines on you, it will lighten everything within you, including your mistakes. If one small boy somewhere now does one thing that nobody recognizes it. But let one other bigger person do the exact same thing. That's the end of the person. The place of having your feet on the ground. The place of cultivating the, the, the presence of God. Cultivating scripture. Cultivating scripture. Maintaining a hunger and a thirst for the things of God. Maintaining a hunger and a thirst for it. Maintaining a hunger and a thirst for it. The Bible many times makes reference to the zeal of the house of the Lord. Russell quoted that earlier on. The zeal of the house of the Lord. The prophecy concerning Jesus of, the, of his kingdom and peace, there shall be no end. At the end of it, he said, this will be accomplished by the zeal of the Lord. So there's something called the zeal of the Lord, the passion of the Lord. You must seek to maintain it. You must seek to maintain it. How do you maintain passion? One of the ways by which you maintain passion is by revelation knowledge. By revelation knowledge. Because your revelation will always fuel your passion. There was a parable of a man who came to a field. And in the field, he saw that this field, there were treasures in it. What did the Bible say? He said he went out, sold all he had, and came back to buy it. What gave him that kind of, that kind of attitude? Why will you sell all you have and seemingly put on a risk to buy a plot of land that has treasure? Because you have something revealed. You have something, you have a revealed word. So your revelation will always influence your dedication. If you are not passionate about God's things, it's because there, are some, there is something about revelation that you haven't yet caught yet. There is a light you have not caught. There is a light of service that you've not caught. There is a light of who you are that you've not caught. Are we together? Revelation. And that's why Paul will several times pray for this. Revelation. Revelation. For you to know. Because the more you know, the more passionate you will be about the things of God. The more passionate you will be about the things of God. The second thing that will help your passion is your, are your words. Are your words. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 8. The same thing is written in Proverbs 26 and verse 22. He says the words of a talebearer, they are like wounds. He says it goes into the innermost, into the innermost part of the belly, the KJV. The innermost parts of the belly, the innermost part of the person. Your words don't only move mountains, your words fuel your passion. 
Your words fuel your, your, your convictions. In James 3, the Bible makes us understand that the tongue is a fire. And it can set ablaze. If you are not ablaze, it's because your tongue is not doing the right work. Your tongue is not doing the right work. You can use your own words to infuse and stir up your passion. You see, because inside every believer is the passion to do the right thing. Inside every believer. Titus 2 and verse 9. Titus 2. And verse 9. No, that's the wrong. That's the wrong reference. I'm looking for where the Bible says that the Lord has made us zealous unto good works. Oh, okay. And Timothy. Titus 2. And verse 14. Titus 2 verse 14. If you read from verse 11, the popular scripture, it says, For the grace of God has, that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the, in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous, zealous. So there is a zeal within every believer. There is a passion within every believer. You have, you, you have a follow come zeal that the Lord puts in you. There is a passion for the things of God. So when people say, eh, these things are drying up. When I read my Bible, I sleep. You know, I, can't maintain, I don't know how to maintain a prayer life and all that. It's because there are certain things missing. There is a zeal that is within you. There is a passion for God's work. There is a fresh desire that is within you. There is a thirst for God's things that is in, inside you. The reason why many times that passion is, seems to wane is because we are not recognizing and acknowledging it by our words. Your words go down. They go down. <laughs> go down into the innermost parts. The Bible says that by the fruit of the lips, Proverbs 18, too, by the fruit of the lips, it says that your belly is full. You are satisfied by the fruit of your lips. That is true physically because by the fruit of your lips, you take in food. But it is also true spiritually because also by the fruit of your lips, something happens inside you. Something happens inside you. So what are you saying? And hope you know that when you don't say anything, you lose by default. To keep quiet is, is acceptance, is to accept status quo. To keep silence is to ask, accept status quo. So what are you saying? What are you saying? How are you fueling that thing that is within you? How are you stirring up? Paul told to, said, spoke to, to Timothy to stir up. 1 Timothy 1.6. 2 Timothy 1.6 rather. To stir up, to stir up, to stir up. You stir up by your words. By your words. You speak to that, to your being inside you. You call forth the river from within you. Is someone still here this morning? You call forth the river from within you. So that when the eventually there is a manifestation of that which the Lord had sent, you will be strong enough to walk in it. You'll be strong enough to walk in it. You'll be strong enough to walk in it. Underneath your breath, can you just please pray in other tongues underneath your breath? Where you are seated. Me credis ka frona mante credis. Lavri kaburogo domanos. I want us to spend some time praying today. 
I'm just going to be praying to stir up the gift of grace that is within us. To stir up every deposit within us. By your words, by your words. Your tongue is a fire and it can set things ablaze. We have been taught to speak to things. But we also need to understand how to speak to you. How to direct your words to you. How to direct your words to your spirit man. How to use your words to draw out. To steer up and to draw out. How do you draw out from within? By your tongue by your tongue, by your words the fruit of the lips rather, shall the belly be satisfied Ruben monster, we are staring up, we are staring up passion, we are staring up passion, we are staring up a desire for the things of God. That's what we're doing. It's a season for new wine. And so we are steering up that thing from within us. There is a well within you. The Bible says it springs forth to eternal life. There is a well within. There is a well within. There is a well. There is a well. There is a well. There is a well. And it springs, it springs, it springs, it springs. It's springing forth to eternal life. It says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell someone, pay attention to the anointing within. Tell someone else, say real good, pay attention to the anointing within. There is nothing the believer needs that has not already been infused into the well that's within you. The Bible makes us understand that he has given unto us 
all things that pertain to life and to godliness. All things that pertain to life and godliness. So the well within us carries everything that we need. It depends on how you can pull it out. Proverbs 20, verse 3 or so. It says, counsel in the heart of a man is as deep waters. He said, a man of understanding will draw it out. A man of understanding will draw it out. Will draw it out. Will bring it forth. So all that you need is already locked up inside you. Use your words to draw it out. Use your words to draw it out. Pay attention to that thing that is within you. Pay attention to the anointing that is within you. Don't be in a hurry to see the manifestation of the thing that is upon you. See, God, there is an element of mystery to every prophetic word. There's an element of mystery. There is a God word side to every prophetic word. There is something, because that's why it's called a prophetic word. There is something you can do and there's something you should do. But there is only also something that only God can do. And with God, God does not work with chronology. Except there is a particular word that comes with its own timing. For instance, like what after Abraham had dined with, you know, those three men. They said by this time in a year, you will have this. Except for words that come with a specific timing. Of which there are only a few like that. Every other word most times don't come with a chronological time. They have a timing to them. But the timing is a kairos moment. It's a season. And it's a season dependent on how much of the process you've been able to go through. It's a season that comes. So it's something that is not, it's not fixed. Even before the Lord fixed the timing for the promise he gave to Abraham. Do you know how long he had been waiting? He waited 25 years. So it was on the 24th that a specific timing came. What about the, the, the last 23 years? What was he doing? He was going through the process. He was going through the process. He was going through, he was strengthening himself. He was going through the process. There's always a preparation for every promise. If you skip the preparation, the promise can kill you. The promise can kill you. So, what I've come to call your attention to this morning is to that which much more than every prophetic word that is upon you. I'm calling your attention to the process. I'm calling your attention to the process. New wine comes out of a crushing. It comes out of a crushing. And so if you want to produce new wine, there will be an element of a crushing that you will also go through. We are excited about the new wine, but I'm also preparing you for the crushing moments. I'm preparing you for the moments that don't look like it. I'm preparing you for the moments that seem to be contradictory. Within those moments, receive strength to wait on him. Receive strength to wait on him. a song that's coming to my heart. I don't know if you know the song. It says, I, I will wait on you. Jesus, you are the sun in my horizon. All my hopes in you. Jesus, I can see you now. Arising, I will wait on you, Jesus. 
You're the sun in my horizon. All my hopes in you, Jesus. I can see you now arising. Oh, I will wait on you, Jesus. You're the sun in my horizon. All my hopes in you, Jesus. I can see you now arising. I will wait on you. I will wait on you. We call you From within me, I can see you now. You're rising up from within me. I can see you now. Your anointing is rising up. I can see you now. Your anointing is rising up. The river of life is flowing. Yes. I can see you now arising. The deposits of grace are rising Stand on my words, yeah. You rising up within me, yeah. I can see you now. For greater is he that's within me. I can see that he that's in the world. of the house of Israel shall take root downward and shall bear fruit upward. We don't just want the fruits that are going upward. We want the roots also going downward. You see, because the more the fruits go upward, the more downward your roots also need to go. 
and what ensures the effectiveness of your roots going downward is what we are doing now. This is how the roots go downward. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is, this is how your roots go down. This is how your roots go down. In the midst of the contradiction, while you still allows your, allow your praise to come forth from within you, this is how the root goes down. This is how your root goes down. This is how you come out strong and stalwart. This is how you build to last. This is how you build to last. The building to last is by your roots going deep down. That's how you build to last. That's how you build to last. attention to the anointing within you. Pay attention to the anointing within you. While you are still waiting for the manifestation, pay an attention to the anointing within you. Build stamina to stand and to stay. And he will strengthen you with might by his power unto all patience and long suffering with joy. So you don't just say I'm patient and long suffering. You will mix it with joy too. While he's not looking at it, you will add joy to it. What a mixture. Long suffering and joy. <laughs> what a mixture. Patience, long suffering, and you'll be joyful in doing it. That it is not yet looking like it. It is in actual fact looking more unlike it. But while you're waiting, you say, oh, I'm going to take joy in my God. I'm going to take joy in my God. I'm going to take joy in my God. That's how to build the strength within you. The foundation oftentimes is not, if I, it's not even visible. I was going to say it's not the most attractive part of the building. You don't even see it to know whether it's attractive or not. <laughs> but it's what is holding it up. It's what is holding it up. So that should be your takeaway. This may not be the usual way I minister, but... <laughs> This is the way I'm ministering today. <laughs> Glory to God. Someone say, I'm strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Oh, say that again. I'm strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Say that again. I'm strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. I am strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. I am strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, I am strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, I am strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, I'm steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Say, I am steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. In my waiting, I'll yet rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.